The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, my name is James. Welcome back to Workbench Wednesday. In this series, we review tools for your electronics workbench. As a fan of Doctor Who, I have always dreamed of taking stuff apart with a sonic screwdriver. Now, here in the real world, Duratool might get close with this cordless version. I noticed it on Farnell's website when ordering some polymer capacitors for another project. So I picked up some extra stuff like these pliers and magnetic trays. Now that we have all of these tools, we need a small project to see how well they work. Which brings me to this old analog scope. I bought it as is, which is a clue it doesn't work. So before I turn it on, I want to check to see if there's any obvious issues like blown capacitors. So I'll use my new Sonic, I mean, cordless screwdriver to open it up and show you what's inside. There is a DMM on top of the case, which I initially thought was an attached option. After removing its two screws, turns out the module is attached. The rest is just a cover. There are a lot more ICs in this DMM module than I expected to see in a 40 year old scope. The main cover is held on by the four feet with two additional screws. Remove them and the cover just slides off. I had a little bit of trouble removing the DMM board. It has a rather unique fit. I needed to disconnect some of the cables and that's when I realized something interesting. There's like little jumper wires and they look like the jumpers you'd see on an Arduino or in, our, in an Arduino project. But here's this piece of test equipment that has uh, 0.1 inch or 2.5 four millimeter headers for wires all over the place. Of course, I had to take a few pictures and I'm really glad I did. Later, when I tried to put the DMM back into place, that's when I realized that there was no silk screen for any of the header cables. Next is an example of how I use the plier set to remove a nut, which is connected to a ground cable for the module. In this case, the magnetic tip was handy for picking up the nut after it had fallen off. There is one section that caught my eye and I really wanted to point it out. It said, warning, high voltage. Obviously, I needed to get into there. Under that cover, there are some passives for the CRT. And even though I'm pretty sure nothing is charged up, I'm not going to take any chances. And so I won't be touching anything for now. While looking at the various other boards in the chassis, I did find something I didn't expect to see and something really cool to share on the same board. Check this out. So what I didn't expect to see is these digital chips. Uh, they're actually logic gates. So they're like a 7400 and a 7408 and I didn't really read the other ones, but I'm curious what they're doing because this board is the vertical preamp, which is, in my opinion, would be an analog board. So I wonder what those are for. The other thing that's just kind of cool looking is these tech ICs. I'm thinking these are probably some kind of amplifier, but I think they have a cool lead frame and it's just interesting to see those in something like this. Like most vintage pieces of test equipment, this has a very beautiful design to see, so I'm really glad I opened up the scope. I didn't see any blown capacitors or damaged wires, so I put it back together to see how well it worked. You might not notice, but I am wearing safety glasses just in case something explodes. And even after playing with the settings, the screen didn't seem to be responding to what I set. So obviously I have some more work to do, but that will have to wait. As for the tools, the magnetic trays are my favorite thing, which is funny because they're so low tech. I ordered two sets because I didn't realize that the bottom has a diameter of about three inches or seven and a half centimeters. Given their size, you could segment them for different areas of your teardown because the magnets do a fantastic job of holding the screws in place. Also, when doing some Commodore 64 soldering, I use them to prop up the large motherboard. It's not the intended use, but it works really great. Regarding the non-sonic but cordless screwdriver, it has a few positives and negatives. It does take some getting used to using it because there is no clutch for the driver. 
and the speed is digital. By that, I mean that it's not variable. It's either on or off, forward or backwards. I didn't measure the torque, but I would say that it's about as much torque as you would expect in something this size. The number and variety of bits, along with the case, makes for a nice set. And of course, it has a really nice LED, so you can see what you're doing. I'm starting to realize I like anything that has an LED light on it. I do have one gripe about the bits, and it's that they aren't magnetic. So if you do pick up the set, consider getting some of these magnetic pliers to go along with it. Oh, and there's also a built-in battery to the screwdriver, obviously, and it lasted for a couple of hours of usage on one charge. Now that I have a better idea of what's involved in taking apart the scope, I can plan that for a future project. In the meantime, I wanna hear from you. What are some of the tools you have found helpful when taking apart or tearing down a product? Head over to element14.com slash workbench Wednesdays and let me know. On this video's page, we'll provide links to the products reviewed in this episode, and I'll post a few extra pictures of the scope. For now, it's time for me to get back to my workbench.